Hi, I'm Vicky. Welcome back to my Tucana costume series. In this part, I'm going to be adding the coloured stripes and the rhinestones to the corset body. To make that applique for the corset, I'm just going to cut up the toile where I've drawn exactly where I want them to be. Before I cut them out, I've labelled each one with the colour that's going to be and I've made some little marks on it so I know where to line them up again as well. And I've also measured up and down from the top and the bottom of the corset so I know where to position them when I put them onto the black corset. So I'm going to cut all three of these out and then give them a press to get them as flat as I can. Here's my three pattern pieces. Now they're cut out and pressed. So <laughs> they look really different shapes but I'm trusting that they're going to work. Now I'm going to cut out a pair of each colour from my orange, yellow and white cotton and I'm going to back all the pieces with some fusible webbing. Here's all six of my pieces cut out. I've transferred all the markings. So I've got the seams marked and I've got my little marks where I can line them back up together. And I've allowed a bit extra front and back just in case I need it as well. Um, and they've all got the fusible web on the back, um, which I'm going to iron on later once they're on the corset but that also helps to stop the fabric fraying. It's time to pin them onto the corset now. I've just used the markings where I, where I measured up and down from where the stripes started to the top and bottom of the corset. So I've used those measurements just to put a few little marks on just to help guide me as I pin them. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how they're lining up. There's a little bit of ease I just need to sort of take out as I stitch it on. It's just where I've pressed the pattern pieces flat, they've just stretched out a tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand stitch them all into place, making sure that they're lining up nicely and there's no gap. And then I'm just gonna unpick that little flap we did at the front over the zip and just tuck these in just to get that nice sharp point there. At the back, I'm just going to turn it under and hand stitch it and cut that little bit of excess off. Because I've got my seam there, I can hand stitch it really neatly onto that seam. So I'm going to hand stitch this first half on and then I'll come back and do exactly the same on the other side, making sure it's completely symmetrical and hand stitch them on as well. And um, then once it's hand stitched, I can give it a quick press with the iron just to melt that fusible webbing and just to help them stick in place and to stop fraying. Okay, my stripes are all sewn on. It's taken quite a while. And then I've just given them a press as well to melt the um, fusible webbing. So they're really well secured. So they have frayed a little bit around their edges. It's quite a loose weave cotton, but it was the only one they had in 100% cotton in the right colors. So I had to get this one. But I'm going to be completely stoning these stripes. These are just the base. So the stones are going to hide the frayed bits. And the, the glue under the stones will help stop it fraying anymore as well. And then I've sewn all the poppers on ready for the hip pads that are going to go on there. Next up, I'm going to start rhinestoning it. To stone the corset, I'm using E6000 Fabrifuse and a wax pencil to pick up the rhinestones with. And I'm using Hyacinth. Hyacinth AB, Citrine, Citrine AB, Neon White and Jet. And I've got all of those colours in SS20, SS16 and SS12. And I did some little testers before I even started to see which colours I wanted to use. So I did some tests for the um, orange and yellow with just the plain Citrine and plain Hyacinth. And then I did some with that AB mixed through as well. And I really like how the ABs look. So I'm going to use the mixture of the plain and AB. The neon white I had to go hunting for. I'd never seen this colour before. It's got a white backing and then the clear stone on top of it. 
I wanted something that was going to stay really white. I didn't want to use white opal, which has got some other colours in it, or the transparent AB, which has got too much colour in it as well. So I think these are a good alternative. I'm not entirely sure how sparkly they are compared to these, but it was the only one I could find that kept it white, white. And then we've got Just Jet on the black, which always looks great. Black on black just looks amazing. And then for the jet as well, on the black parts of the corset, I've also got some black stones in a navette shape and teardrop shape in various sizes. I think I'm going to use those along the neckline and possibly the hip line as well, but I'll decide that as I start doing it. I sell all of these stones except the neon white on my website, and I don't sell the teardrops and navettes, but all of, all of these round stones in those five colours I sell on the website, and I sell Fabrifuse, and wax pencils as well. I'm based in Australia. I ship to Australia, New Zealand and the US. Um, or I'm sure you can find places locally to you that you can get things like this as well. I'm hoping over the next year when I've got the budget to expand the range of stones that I do, that I sell on the website, I'm hoping to expand to including the teardrops and nabets on there in a variety of colors. But as with anything business, it takes time to grow these things. So it'll happen hopefully, hopefully sometime this year. I'll talk about the kangaroo leather later when we start working on that part. So for now, I'm going to move all this out of the way and grab the corset and show you how I'm going to stone the corset. I'm going to start by outlining each of the stripes just to get a really nice sharp edge on each of them. And for that, I'm using the SS16 size of stone. So I'm literally just going to put a line of my Fabrifuse where I want the stones to go. But it's a good idea just to keep a tissue handy just so you can test that because it's a new tube it wasn't coming out very smoothly that's better so keep a tissue handy to test it on so i'm literally just going to put a little line of the fabric fuse where i want it to go and then use my wax pencil to pick up the stones and outline each of these stripes Tissue's handy just to wipe your nozzle occasionally as well. I'm well, sorry if you get in my head for a minute, I just want to make sure they're really straight. Yep, yeah, that looks good. This is going to hide those slightly fraying edges on this not very <laughs> tightly woven fabric and stop them for, from fraying any further. Now, one thing I did not take into account, which when I designed this, which Jazida picked up on, was that the white could very well discolour from the soot from the fire torches um, and I'm guessing the yellow and orange to a certain extent as well could so I'm going to make sure these are very very heavily stoned so there's not too much fabric showing that could then potentially um, become sooty and dirty from the soot from the fire torches. Between the layer of E6000 fabric views and then all the stones. Hopefully that should prevent that happening and keep the white nice and white. And the reason I do the fabric behind the stones, even if I'm doing them really densely, is if I was just to stone the white on top of the black, you're still gonna see bits of black coming through it and you're not gonna get that lovely solid color that we're after. The glass rhinestones and the fabric fuse are both safe to use on fire performance costumes. Great, so I'm gonna keep going around the edge of all of the colored stripes and once all the outline's done and dried, I'll show you how I'm going to fill in the middles. This is how it looks with the edges of each of the colour panels completely done. And next I've started filling them in and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I've already done the white one because I thought that one probably wouldn't show up so well on the camera. So next I'm going to do the yellow and the orange. And I've started by just doing a scattering of the SS20 size stones. And I'm going to be using the SS16s and SS12s to fill in the gaps. I'm filling in quite solidly with this, which is pretty time consuming, but you can leave bigger gaps if you don't want to go as solid with it. So all I'm going to do is take my Fabrifuse and start putting glue on. I'm not doing dots for this because I want it to be a really solid fill, so I'm going right through with the glue like that. And then I'm just gonna start filling in with whichever size 
bits in each gap and you, I'm using a mixture of the plain and the ABs here. So I tend to use mainly the SS16s for this part and then I use the SS12s in the gaps where the, where the 16s don't fit. See, I've got a little gap there, so I'm going to go in that gap with a 12. And I'm choosing whether it's the A, B or the plane pretty much at random to get a mix. Kind of tend not to overthink it. Now, the amount of fabrifuge you can put on at one time sort of depends on the weather a little bit. It's quite warm today, so I haven't done a huge amount at one time otherwise it's going to dry out before I get to it. So you can see the effect I'm starting to create. I'm starting to get that nice solid look of the stones there. It's going to give really good coverage and then any little gaps between the stones because we've got the coloured fabric behind it that's going to hide the gaps and because the yellow will show through so and from a distance on stage it's going to look incredible so that's that whole area done i'm going to keep using this technique to completely fill in the yellow stripe and the orange stripe and then i'll be back to show you how i'm going to do the black here's all three stripes completely solidly stoned and i don't know if the camera's picking up just how sparkly that is so it's not 100% solid, you can still see bits of the backing fabric coming through, but it's pretty, pretty heavily stoned. And that is going to give a really, really amazing sparkly effect on stage or when the fire passes by it as well. So I'm really happy with that. So I'll just zoom in so you can see what it looks like a little more close up. So there you go, there's the three colours. And there's that sparkle. It's really, really sparkly. The camera's just, <laughs> the camera's not picking up just how sparkly it is. Next, I'm gonna start adding my large black shaped stones. And I want these to be along the neckline, either side of the colored stripes and around the very bottom, around the hips. These stones are just plain black. They do not have a foil backing on. So I can just put them on with E6000. For those colours, I find that the stone can come off the foil backing. So when I use those, as well as gluing them, I also then sew them in place afterwards. But I glue them first because it's a lot easier. So I glue and then stitch. But for these without the foil backing, I won't need to. I've decided to start at the points at the top of the corset. And I've been fiddling with the different shapes to decide which ones look best there. I'm sorry it's black on black, it's a little bit difficult to see. But I've decided that the um, Nevette shape is the best. They look quite feather-like when they're on. And I've started just fiddling and playing and then I've glued a few at the point. I find it's best to glue a few and let them dry, otherwise they can slide around quite easily. And also I find I need to prop it up a bit as well to keep the bits I'm working on flat to stop the stone sliding sideways on the glue as well. So now these points run and dry, I'm gonna sort of fiddle with the shapes again and see what I want to do along the neckline and coming down. I was gonna do the edge, but I'm actually thinking now it might look quite nice if it comes down and fades out from the point. So I'm thinking if I do another sort of similar shape here, yeah, oh, that's right. I go down the middle like that and then keep coming out and then go back to the smaller ones. Yeah, it's a little bit wing-like. I think that's going to look really nice and tie in with our bird theme as well. Excellent. So I'm going to keep fiddling, gluing, playing, and I'm going to go, yeah, so from this point down and out. And then I want to do a line of them along the top of the white, the bottom of the orange and around the hips as well. So... I'll keep fiddling, playing, gluing, and then I'll be back to show you how I'm gonna fill in the gaps.
all of my navette stones are now on by the way navettes are also called horse eye this shape so if you're looking for them they might come up under horse eye rather than navette so now they're all on i'm going to start filling in all the gaps to fill in the gaps on the black, I'm just going to use the SS16 size of stones rather than doing a mixed size because I want it to look a bit different from the other parts and also because we've got the poppers, the press studs here, I want to keep it quite low and I think the 20s might be too high and stop it poppering on and also I, because these are quite small it's not going to detract from the shape of all the navettes on there. So I'm just going to take my fabric fuse and start doing little glue dots all over. I want it fairly dense, but not as dense as the um, orange, yellow and white. So I'm just going to start by doing some dots like this. And then I'm going to use my pencil to put my, oh, I've got a 12 mixed in there. Never mind, no one will notice. Sorry, I know black is not the best color for this because you can't really see the detail. That's the effect I'm creating. So it's going to give us good, good coverage, not quite as solid as this. And it's not going to detract from these. So I'm going to go around now and completely stone all of the black that hasn't already got something on it. And I am going to change that 12 for a 16 or that's going to bug me. Here's the corset with all of the crystals added to it and you can see how very, very sparkly it is. As I spin it slowly around, you can see it catching the light. The white isn't quite as sparkly as the other colours, but I think overall it gives a really good effect. And I think any other colour just wouldn't have worked so well there. I needed it to be that really pure white. I'm really happy with the, how the black navette stones look. They've given quite a sort of feathery wing-like touch to it. It's quite subtle, but I think little details like that just make all the difference. And that's how they look on that V at the back there. Beautiful. And that's how they look over the curve of the hip with those really big stones there. They look great. Really happy with that. So that's it for this part. In the next part, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make all the leather feathers and add them to the top layers of this costume. Thanks for watching. See you next time.